When we say Kwame Yashiro, we said rise to the nation of Israel. That's right. You know who that is? Because contrary to the teachings of the world and the teachings of many so-called ministers and pastors, you so-called blacks and Latinos are the people found from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation that you read in your Bible. The children of Israel, that's you. That's who you are. And so today, today's lesson is going to be entitled, Who Are You Walking With? Who are you walking with? Go ahead and get Amos chapter 3 and verse 3. Go ahead and read that. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Now this is a question. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can you have that? The answer is no. Two cannot walk together except they be agreed. That's right. They got to be on one accord. So now the question is that I pose unto you, who are you agreeing with in your walk? Are you a truly aligned with walking with the creator of heaven and earth? Are you truly aligned with God? Or are you aligning yourself even ignorantly with another deity that you believe to be God? That's the question. Let's get to the next question. Let's get Genesis. We're going to get the book of Genesis chapter 5, verse 22 through 24. Because here's the thing. The scriptures speak of people that walk with God. But what did they do? How did they walk? How does one walk with the Lord? Let's get Genesis. Chapter 5, verse 22 through 24. Genesis chapter 5, verse 22. And Enoch walked with God. Enoch did what? Enoch walked with God. So we see a man in the scriptures, Enoch. He walked with the creator. He walked with God. Read. After he begot Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. Because he actually mastered life. He accomplished master in life. Let's go ahead and get the next scripture. Go ahead and get Genesis 6 and 9. Then we're going to get Luke after that. Let's get Genesis 6 and 9. Because he not wasn't the only man that walked with God. There's another popular man that is known to have walked with God. Let's get Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man. What kind of man? A just man. Noah was a just man. Read. And perfect. And what? And perfect. Noah was perfect. See that the Lord God calls us to be perfect. Because contrary to popular belief, perfect does not mean flawless. Perfect does not mean that you never make any sort of mistakes. That's not what that man was because you read people that were perfect like Noah and made mistakes. But what you see being perfect means being complete according to God. I give you a scenario. A wise man is one who sees his faults, admits them, and corrects them. The fool is the one who sees his flaws and does nothing about it. And the blind are the ones that don't see it at all. That wise man is the example of the perfect man, according to scripture. You realize certain things you may not be doing right, and you choose to correct those things to be a better man or woman of the Lord. While you continuously learn and practice being better and doing better. Let's go ahead. Read that again, Genesis. Verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. 
That's how Noah was walking with God. By trying to be a just and perfect man. Let's go ahead and get Luke chapter 9 verse 23. Then we'll get Genesis 17. Let's get Luke. Because some people, man, Christ said it. You're called to be perfect on this earth. You're called to walk before God and be perfect. Read that. Luke chapter 9 verse 23. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. You see that? Because if you want to follow after Christ, he says, look, you got to deny yourself. What does that mean? You got to deny everything it is that is contrary to God's word that you want to do. That's right. If there's somebody that likes to steal, you got to stop stealing and work honestly, according to God, to walk with him, to walk with Christ. If there's somebody that likes to fornicate, sleep around, commit adultery, not take this person on as your husband, if, and not taking this person on as a wife, that's a, a sin according to God. You got to change your life around. That's called you got to repent. That's right. That's all repent means is to change. Bring it up. If there's somebody that likes to go around fighting people, you got to stop doing that and start loving your people. That's right. Uh, uh. Stop being a problem. Stop letting anger control you. Stop uh. letting your lust control you. Whether it be your lust for money, lust for power, lust for sexual pleasure. Stop letting those things control you and fight to bring your spirit is a submission to the word of God. That's what we're called to do. Read on. And take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Because thinking you're going to save your life doing whatever it is you want to do. You deceive yourself and think you're doing yourself a service, but you're truly doing yourself a disservice. Because everything we do and say, we're held accountable for. But yet and still we ignore it because there's no immediate punishment for our actions. So we believe we're okay. We believe we're saved. Get Genesis 17 and 1. Let's get Genesis chapter 17 and 1 because what is it God told Abraham? Get Genesis chapter 17 and let's read verse 1. And let's see, what did God tell Abraham to do? Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old. So when you're reading, when Abraham, before his name was Abraham, Abram was 90 years old, read. Right? And nine, and, a, and the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. He said, walk before me and be thou perfect at 99 years old. Right. You're never too old to change. You don't have to be stuck in your ways. He didn't tell him keep doing you and keep doing what you were doing. He said, look, walk before me. Be on one accord with me and be perfect. That's what he told him to do. But did he tell us any differently? No, get Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 13 and we get Matthew 5. Let's get the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 13. Because we were commanded to do the same thing as God commanded Abraham. What God commanded Noah. That's right. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 13. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. That's a half step. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Do as thou wilt with the Lord thy God. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. That's what we're looking for. That's what God is looking for. And it ain't a light switch. It ain't something that just gonna come on automatically. In Matthew one? chapter five. Spanish one? But it's something that is a day-to-day -day practice you that you have to apply enough. concerning effort with. You have to choose to be a better man and a better woman in God's eyes on a day-to-day -day basis. Read Matthew chapter five and verse 48. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect. What did Christ say? Be ye therefore perfect. Christ said it. When people would say the red letters, Christ said, be ye perfect. Because many of us, especially calling ourselves Christian or Catholic, will say all things are possible through Christ who strengthens me. Well, guess what? Christ is strengthening you and commanding you to be perfect. To stop doing what you want to do and to change your ways. 
before judgment, before something bad falls upon you. Read. Even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. See that Christ said, look, I told you to be perfect just as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. But that's only if you choose to walk with God. Because if you're not walking with God, you're not choosing to be perfect. You still want to fornicate. You still want to sleep around. You still want to steal, kill, rob, whatever it is you want to do. You're not walking with God. You're walking with Satan. Come on. But you ain't got to keep walking with Satan. That's the thing. And I ain't telling you anything that I myself haven't done. Because I got to be the first to admit I was walking with Satan. Right. Bring it up. I chose to do what it is I wanted to do. But now that I got a choice and I can fight to be better, I got to make the better choice. Because woulda, coulda, shoulda is always too late. And guess what? They say if you know better, you should what? Do better. Do better. But so many people don't want to do better. You find living how you living. And not letting any man, woman, or child tell you differently because you call yourself grown. And that's the problem with our community. We can't correct each other because they grown now. They don't listen. They don't want to change. You can watch your, a brother beating on a sister and not say nothing. You can watch a brother beating on an elderly and not say nothing. Ain't nothing gonna change if don't nobody do nothing differently. Things will remain the same if you choose to remain the same. Because change begins with oneself. You have to choose to better yourself. You can't simply want better for everyone else, but then simply refuse to change yourself. You can't be up there, mama can't be up there twerking on a pole and expect her daughter to do better if she don't decide to do better. Because it ain't gonna happen automatically. You can't want better for your children if you don't choose to do better for yourself. Because you're the primary example. I can't live a life selling dope, crack, so on and so forth, and hope my son don't do the same and hope he just do better like it's just supposed to fall out the sky. Bring it out! I have to fight every day to educate him better by first fighting every day to educate myself better. Y'all don't hear me. Bring it up. It's the same thing. I can't continue to live a life stealing, robbing other people and expect my kids to do differently. And hope, man, I hope y'all just don't have to do this like I gotta do this. Well, say, Daddy, show me differently. Show me there's a better way. Fight for a better way. Women can't live a life as a whole, as a stripper, and expect better for her daughter if she don't fight every day to be better. But instead of fighting to be better, you know what our society teaches us? Instead, glorify it. That's right. Glorify it. We'd rather glorify lives of crime, lives of self-indulgence, lives of selfishness, lives of whoredom, rather glorify it then fight to work to change it. Right. That's backwards. That's satanic. Because nowadays, instead of people fighting tooth and nail to teach their kids to be better, now it's just, well, that's just on them. Nowadays, you're glorifying women in the industry who live life of whoredom and you'll glorify them, but some of y'all will still hope better for your children. When, if you glorify them and continue to push them in your community, then that's, guess what? Those become your kids' role models. Those become who they look up to. Those become who they wanna be like. Instead of you showing them true leadership, showing them true people who work, not saying because the thing is, it's easy to, to go and live those lifestyles. It's easy to steal. It's easy to pimp. It's easy to kill. It's easy to lose control and do what you want to do. 
But it's hard to practice and exercise restraint. It's hard to exercise trying to live a right and blameless lifestyle. That's the battle. That's the hard road. And guess what? Many people don't want to walk it. Because if you got a choice, I can walk easy, cruise easy downhill, or I gotta walk up this tough mountain and be right and be good, which one most gonna take? I'd rather take the easy road. It'd be easy on my feet, my back. I'm gonna feel better at the end. But that easy road, it ain't going to a good place. It ain't got a good final destination. Because that easy road is gonna take you to that lake of fire. That easy road, there's judgment and consequences for not obeying the word of the Lord. But that hard road, that hard road is rewarding. That hard road is respectable. You gotta take that hard road and you might slip and fall going up that hard road. You might scrape your knees. You might slip, but guess what? You can get back up and keep going. Because it ain't easy paving the way. So many of our people are looking for somebody else to pick up the mantle. You're waiting for somebody else to do the hard work. So you just follow down the path that they did. But you gotta, when, when there's so much snow that fell down, you gotta start digging and plowing your way through to make a path for those to follow. It ain't easy. But guess what? Your hard work, blood, sweat, and tears makes it easier for those coming behind you. That's what you got to look at. That's what you got to remember. Read that scripture again. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48. And then we'll get 2 Timothy 3, 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. That's what we call to be. We're called to be perfect even as our Heavenly Father is perfect. He ain't expect nothing different from us. You know why? Because so many of you will call yourself a child of God in a minute, but not believe you can do what God said you can do. You'll say it's impossible to be perfect, but are you not God's children? And if it's children, if you descend from a God, what does that make you? That makes you a God. That makes you a power. Because you come from a greater power. And when you're weak, you got him to lean on. Go ahead, get 2 Timothy. Yep, chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. Read that. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You see that all scripture is given for instruction in righteousness. You want to learn how to be perfect? You want to learn how to get right? The scriptures teach you how to be right. So many people hate the Bible because it's not biased. The Bible don't promote homosexuality. Come on. The out. Bible don't promote stealing. That's right. The Bible don't promote pimping. That's, right. That's why people hate it. Because they want to still do what they want to do and not be told differently. Bring it out. The Bible corrects the evils in men. It speaks against it. That's right. It teaches you what happens for those who chose to live those lifestyles. That's right. But read on. That the man of God may be perfect. So hold on. The Bible instructs your righteousness that if you choose to be a man of God, you can be perfect, brother. You can be perfect, sister. If you choose to be. But folks who don't want to make that choice. Ah, that sounds difficult. Ah. Why I got to do it? Why me? Why not? Somebody got to do it. Somebody got to pave a way for the next generation. Oh, y'all like being hoes. Y'all like being pimps. Y'all like stealing. Except when it happened to you. You don't mind stealing till you be stole from. You don't mind pimping if somebody pimp your dog. Then it's a problem when it happened to you, right? Why not be better to better your community? Because every one of you are part of the community. No matter how much you try to live in your own realm, just drive your own car, go where you want to go. 
But now, finish that. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. You see that? That you may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Let's get Luke 9, 23 to 26. You got to be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. See, I ain't out here just because this is what I love to do. I'm out here to do what I can to help better my community. And this is just one part of it. It's ain't all of it. It's just a part of it. Because somebody has to want better. Somebody has to promote change in the community, even if our people don't want to hear it. Read on. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me. Christ said, look, if any man will come after me. Read. Let him deny himself. You got to start denying the world and the carnal thing that you want to do. Read. And take up his cross. You got to take up your cross, bear your burden, bear your lust, your sin that you want to do and still fight and press for to be a better example, read. Daily and follow. How often? Daily. You got to do it daily. It's a battle from the cradle to the grave. It's a daily struggle, a daily fight. Because guess what? I can't just choose today not to be a pimp. I can't just choose today not to commit adultery, not to fornicate, not to steal. Not just go around busting people upside the head. I got to fight every day. Every day it's a battle to be perfect. Every day it's a battle not to do those things. Read. And follow me. For who And choose to follow God. And choose to walk with God. Read. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. If you want to save your life and keep doing what you want to do, you're going to end up losing that life. Read. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake. But if you choose to make the necessary sacrifices to better your life for the sake of God, for the sake of Christ. Read. The same shall save it. You'll save it. Through life eternal. You'll save right. it. For what is a man advantage? If he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away. Because what advantage is it? What good is it that you work hard to gain that house, gain that car, get that paycheck, when at the end of the day, all of that is only temporary. It ain't going to last. It's all temporary. But you know what does last? Your spirit. Only question is, is where is it going? And that's all based upon who you're walking with. Keep going. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. Because you see that? If you don't want to walk with God, you don't want to do what he want to say, you want to be ashamed? Because see, when you walk in perfect, it's, it can be frowned upon in today's society. Because you ain't moving according to the status quo. What's going on, my sister? How you doing, brother? I'm maintaining not complaining to yourself. All right, all right. I accept and I acknowledge. Come on, guys. Well, all praises. Well, in acknowledging that, you said it. But guess what? Get James 122. We said it. We acknowledge it. But now we got to make the changes. From the inside out, we got to choose to be a better person according to what Christ said. So now, I'm asking, are you ready to start making those changes? Well, I got to give that Chicago. Well, guess what? You do well in some of the changes you've made, but you've got to be perfect now. I'm calling you to be perfect, to make all the changes. Okay, what I got to do to be perfect? To be perfect, you got to stop keeping the holidays of the world. That's idolatry. Christmas, New Year's, Easter. We've been taught it's following Christ, but it ain't got nothing to do with Christ. It's, it's worshiping other gods. We've got to put those things away. And keep the Passover, keep Easter, keep the things that, because Passover was also known as Passat in the scriptures. And that's what it means with Easter in the scriptures. That's the right Easter. That's Passover. That's what we got to keep. Okay, well, okay, I hear all that. But when it 
That's part of your soul. When it comes, okay, let me say this. Go when, ahead. When it comes to your soul, get into the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. God said it's not about the walls, and I see y'all outside. But he said repent. What does repent mean? Repent means, repent means to uh, change. Absolutely. But now when we change, we're ceasing from one thing and, and, and now applying another. So now the laws teach us what it is that we have to do. We know some of the things that you probably don't do. You probably don't rape, probably don't steal, you probably don't kill. That's all contained within the law. So doing those things, one does good. That's true. That's but now remember, even with doing those good, that ain't all inclusive of what good entails of. Right. There's other things that the scriptures say that thou must do, that's good, like keep the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is the day. If one is buying, selling, working, they're not doing good. So now you do these other things that are good, but now you got to start applying the thing that you're not doing. That's good according to the Lord. So now I'm asking you, because it's, it, man, it can seem heavy, but you got to make those changes. Now, if, if you're buying, selling, working today, you got to choose to fight. Tell your employer, I can't work today. Thus saith the Lord. I can't buy today. If you had something behind it, plan to buy, you got to do it tomorrow. Or wait till the sun go down at night when the Sabbath is open. Those are the changes we're talking about. Those are the changes that all of us sacrifice and make it. This is the walk with God. Because many of us are taught to treat the Bible like a bag of trail mix. We like these few things that we do. We like to call ourselves a good person. And I got a personal relationship with God, but then we don't want to do the rest of the things he tells us to do. You give me today, my sister. Because now, because these ain't my words, because get Matthew 5, 48. Because what do you say? And this is part of a bearing our cross daily. Because guess what? Many people live lifestyles that the scriptures condemn. All of us have lived lifestyles that the scriptures condemn. We chose to change. That's right. God his word to deliver, to heal, and set free. Absolutely. But now, you said to heal, deliver, and set free. How do we do that? By not judging one another, teaching one another. That well, none of us can judge you. Only God can judge you. We're teaching you right now. That's right. Because guess what? Get Matthew. I mean, excuse me. Get Revelation twenty-one to twenty-two. Because what did the scripture say so that we can inherit that eternal life? Get Revelation chapter twenty-one, verse twenty-two. Listen, we're not perfect people. We'll never be perfect. Revelation. Oh, that ain't the scripture. We're called to be perfect. I'll get that in the red letter. Revelation chapter 21, verse 22, and I saw no temple therein for the Lord. I'm sorry, get Revelation 22. 22, 14. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14, blessed are they that do his commandments. It says this in the last book of blessed are they that do his commandments. That's right. Keeping the Sabbath is part of his commandments. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. We got to know the commandments. The That's why right. we're teaching it right now. Because the Sabbath is a commandment. It's part of the ten. If people buy and sell and work in the day, they're not walking with God. Read on. You know, God ain't gonna, he ain't going to judge us according to our works. He's going to judge us according to our hearts. Let's get James 122. Why we do what we do. Well, let's get what according the scriptures say. Mind. Let's get James 122. Go ahead and read that. James chapter 1 verse 22 read it but be ye doers of the word see that it said be and doers of the right. word read. and not hearers only not hearers only read right. deceiving your own self then we deceive ourselves thinking we doing right and we walking with God but we really walking with Satan that's where the deception comes in well, I find Satan because Satan ain't my world that's the world these people are living in if they choose not to change I don't choose that prophecy. I'm not, I'm not of Satan. It's not a prophecy. It's what the scriptures say. I'm not part of that. Because I ain't. Get Matthew 5, 48. And I'm not part of Satan's demons. And I am not part of Satan's teaching. Well, the only way you can say that is if you know. That's right. You're keeping the Sabbath step. day. You're not buying, selling, working today, right? You're yeah. not buying anything today, right? I just brought some food. Then you're not walking with God. You're walking with Satan. You got to change. Now, that doesn't mean you want to do it willingly, you do it ignorantly. 
But now you can choose to make that change in your life. So you guys don't eat on today? We didn't say you couldn't eat. We said you couldn't buy, sell, work. What's going on, brother? You can still eat. He just says no buying, no selling, no working. No cooking. No cooking. There it is. Cooking day prior. Prepare today. Come on, brother. And they do the same thing. The brothers and sisters right there, husband and wife, they choose to make the same sacrifice as us. Oh, praise. Oh, praise. It's a Sabbath day. You can choose to make them same changes. Go ahead, get Matthew 5:48. Read that. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect. Christ said, be perfect. God. That's the red letters right there. It says Christ said, be perfect. He didn't tell us to do what we want to do or half step. Now I'm calling you stop half stepping and come all the way. You can make that change. Do you want to come all the way or continue to have them? Okay. You want to come all the way? He said, be perfect, right? Even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Even as our Father in heaven, if you choose to make him your Father, he wants you to, he wants you. He wants you, but you got to want him. I choose, I choose Abba as my Father. Then you got to choose to do what he says. He wants right, obedience from right. you. That's right, I agree with you, but listen. No, let me say it. But listen, God said it's your personal relationship that you build with him. What, what scripture is that? The scripture is, Christ just said, be ye perfect, and my Father in heaven is perfect. That's true. But what scripture are you speaking? I, I can't go with that if that ain't what the scripture say. Come on. The scripture said, we got to be perfect, our Father in heaven is imperfect. We got to choose the change. So now, it's a matter of because okay. go back to Second Timothy chapter okay. three, sixteen, and if seventeen. You make a mistake, and if you make a mistake, you get up and you keep fighting. You we make mistakes all the time. I just made grievous mistakes. I failed. I had to get back we up. Repent. We repent. Exactly. Right. You just said you can going. repent seventy times seventy. He and said, and now if you give your brother seventy times seventy, he said, but you a new person all over again. You can repent 70 times 70. That ain't dead. He didn't exactly. say you can repent 70 times 70. He said if thy brother offend thee, forgive him 70 times 70. If your brother offend you, forgive him 70 times 70. That's what he was saying, which. Because guess what? Get Hebrew. Actually, get 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. Then we're going to get Hebrew. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. So all scripture right. is given by inspiration of God. Right? And is profitable for doctrine. It's profitable for doctrine what you teach. We teach according to thus saith the Lord. Read. For reproof. For reproof, meaning to correct. Because I need correction too. It ain't just things talking to you. I need correction. These brothers need correction because I can be going off. Read. Right. For correction, for instruction in righteousness. This is what's going to instruct you on how to be righteous. Right. Not just partly, because I, most people, they do a, a couple of the commandments. They keep a few, but they're not ready to be perfect. They're not ready to be complete, according to the word. Read on. That the man of God may be perfect. That you may be what again? It's calling you to be perfect. We read it with the red letters of Christ. Read it again. Scripture's calling us all throughout to be perfect. Read. Truly furnished unto all good works. See that? The Scripture's instruction on how to be perfect. Only thing is, that's not what's being taught in mainstream Christianity, mainstream Catholicism. We're taught how to sell my heart, come as you are. Yeah, you come as you are at the beginning of your repentance process, but you don't stay there. Right, You continue to fight to be better. Is that the fight you want to endure? That's right. And it got to be a desire of your heart. Absolutely. You got to want to change. That's right. Because God said he don't want nobody that don't want him. No. You got to want him. Absolutely. We can't make nobody want God because God said if they don't want him, he can't have him. No. He wants you to be hot or cold. Can't be lukewarm. So I'm calling you, sis. Come get with us. Come by today. We got a school. We got class today. Don't be overwhelmed in the process. Come on. Fight with it. Go through it. You got. We got sisters that will help fight with you. Brothers that'll help fight with you. That's right. We got a community. 
Don't be intimidated by it. Don't let Satan take away your chance to get fully right. right. That's what he wants. He's trying to sift you as weak right now. It ain't easy, sis. It's the hard road. You can keep walking the easy road. You can go on this light change, keep on with the easy road. Judgment's gonna come though. Hey. You got the easy road, you can take it right now and keep going. These people want the easy road. See them rolling up through it? They want the easy road. They don't want to take the hard road because the hard road requires day-to-day -day change according to the word of God and not what I want to do. That's the hard road. So we telling our people everywhere to repent just as we fighting to repent. And it's a day-to-day -day battle. And with that, I'll say shalom. Let the next brother come up. Oh.